me try again. Can you hear us? Hello, hello, can you hear us? Check that sound. <laughs> Somebody say you can hear us, please. Oh, what a day, what a week, what a year. Oh, we're here, we've started again. <laughs> We can, oh, I think sound. sounds working. Sound. We're, Hooray. We're good to All go. right. right we will we'll just yeah. press on. Yeah. We're pressing Sorry, well, yeah, on. Sorry so, about like, that. It's uh, been a day. Yeah, we just had a bit of a uh, little <sighs> bit of a dry, a few <sighs> technical difficulties, but we've sort of managed to overcome that. Yeah, so. Oh, my gosh. Like I've, I've often said, uh, if we had a, uh, a camera on us about five minutes before the live starts, I reckon you could actually start Everyone a TV. Everyone can hear us. That's fantastic. I reckon you could start <laughs> a TV reality show just on that alone, that. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> welcome, 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 welcome to Havenwood Tiny Homes live chat. Uh, it's usually Rick. I'm here today. Um, we do this on a Sunday. We get your questions during the week. We've got Tara joining us and she has asked a particular question about yeah. DAs, which we'll talk about in a minute. Um, but you, please, if you haven't joined us before, if you are, we're talking and you've got a question, put it up on the screen. We'll see it on Instagram and Facebook and we can and answer your question if I can catch it in time. Um, I'll get Rick to answer the questions. So yeah. um, we've got lots to get through today. We have our giveaway winner to Ooh. announce. So yes. if you missed that a couple of weeks ago, was it a couple of weeks ago? Yeah, we said we were giving away a weekend for two to Willow Springs Farms Tiny Home. It's called the Lily Pad. Uh, hi, Belinda. Um, Belinda. Your delivery is coming. I'll talk to you during the week. Uh, next week, we'll talk. Um, so, yeah, so we've got a giveaway to, to do. Uh, we've got our winner written down. So hopefully they're mm. listening today and we can let them know on the live. We'll keep everyone in suspense. Yes, we'll, we'll do that, that later do that on. We'll do, do that, that later, later on. on. Yeah. We've also got, we've got to talk about another one that's for sale that mm. we've just heard about. So, um, yeah, yeah, anyway, should we get into some questions? Yeah, yeah let's crack it all done. All right. Um, well, actually, firstly, I thought we might chat about the delivery that we just did. Because mm -hmm. I know that Nick, our driver, is watching at the moment. I hope mm. you're okay, Nick. <laughs> we, hey, Nick. I thought, actually, I thought we'd start with how, how he got his nickname. Before we tell you what happened, Grills. how he okay. got his nickname. Grills. Uh, anyway, long story short, uh, I take the way about, uh, about 35, 40 bikes away every year on a camping trip. Anyway, this camping trip in particular uh, will... As part of the trip, we do a bushwalk, climb a mountain, and back down. On the way back down, Grills had a spill. Long story short, he's cut the uh, cut the crap out of his arm. Massive cut all the way down his hand, down to the bone. Um, and anyway, we get back to site, and um, uh, I basically hit, put it straight on. And I said, "There's two ways we can go about this, Grills. We can either um, Nancy boy, it, and we can take you into the hospital and get anaesthetic and start, sew you up." Or and the hospital was what a couple of hours away. Oh or? no, an hour away from the hospital. Right, okay. Or we can um, tough it up. Uh, we have a nurse here. You bought your own sutures on this uh, camping trip, so we could actually use your stitches to stitch you up raw with no anaesthetic. Um, and Grill sort of gives gives me this look, and he says, "Let's do it." So ah. did you give him a stick or okay. something? No, I'll, I'll give him a few uh, glasses of whiskey. And couple of stick. <laughs> couple of whiskeys, stick in his mouth. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I think it was around about eight or nine stitches later. Mm. Um, just it was so funny because one of the guys that was actually with us was a police officer. Yeah. He was actually um, dabbing the blood, and so we could see where the stitches were going. You know, right. <laughs> anyway, he went white. He fainted. He fainted. He, okay. <laughs> he came <he> over. <laughs> Um, anyway, uh, long story short, that's how Grills got his so uh, Bear nickname. Grills, yes. Bear Grills it is. Yep. Anyway, um, on the trip. So on uh, the delivery that was just on the done. Delivery that he just did for us, a uh, thousand odd days down to the uh, uh, bottom of Victoria. Um, uh, we get to the front gate um, and the owners chopped off all the trees all the way through the property, but um, somehow they overlooked the, uh, right the, at the, the trees <laughs> right at the very entrance of this property. Yeah. So. Anyway, fortunately, the, uh, the owners had a chainsaw that gave to Grills, and Grills had to climb up on top of the truck and start chopping the tree. And uh, um, anyway, he's, um, he's had a bit of a mishap with the chainy and um, taken a massive chunk out of his forearm. And, uh, of course, uh, Grills, true to the name, ripped the shirt off, wrapped it up in, uh, <laughs> around the forearm and kept doing the job. You and know, then so. drove home. And then, <laughs> Of course, delivered the toilet and had to set it all up. Delivered the house, and, yes, um, all the things. But I'm pretty sure the owner looked after him with bandages and oh, stuff. Oh, I'm and, sure uh, she did. <laughs> <laughs> and it was quite funny. I said, Grill, send me a photo through. 
and he, he sends a photo through, and I'm looking at the wound, and I'm thinking, oh, yeah it's, it's, yeah, it's a bit of a cut, you know, but then I sort of had to get in proportion the size of Grill's arm. Yes. Like, his like arms are the size trunk. of my thighs. Yeah. You know, like, and so this cut, like, you think, oh, yeah, it's a big cut, but then when you think how big his arm was, and then you sort of relative that to the size of the cut, and it's like this gaping wound, you know. <laughs> So the next delivery is Belinda's. So when they, oh, oh, and yeah. Shane. So when when they see him, um, yes, Belinda said she'll have a first aid kit on hand. <laughs> yeah. Excellent, well That's done. Well, we might put that in our notes. <laughs> we do we do have first aid, but but um, yeah, we'll make sure oh, we have a kit really well kitted out in our truck as well. So yeah. Yeah. oh man, so yeah, he's amazing. He's yeah. an amazing man, and yeah. uh, we just love him to bits. Yeah, yeah, he's a he's a great driver. Really happy. Um, he's uh, a big mountain, but he's mountain very. Man. And, and uh, he got back well, uh, Friday evening about uh, half past twelve, one o'clock. I got, got the text through to mm. say he got back. So, so we don't yeah. sleep till he gets home. Yeah, that's so. right. So <laughs> just like one of our kids. Tell, I tell, always send me a text through. <laughs> I mean, I'll always hear it. Uh, yeah. I only sleep very light, and uh, mm. of course, get the text about twelve thirty, one o'clock, and uh, he's parked the truck in the factory and good to go. Good to so, go. Yeah, that's fantastic. Happy All right, nice. well, Righter. two nurses at the ready for your delivery, Greg. Fantastic. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Actually, Rick will probably do yours, Greg, because it's only local. So, <laughs> actually, we uh, might get we might get will, Nick to do it. Will just they be so wearing the nurses' him. gear? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> they might wear it after you've left. <laughs> so when they get into their tiny house. All right. Girls might want to see that delivery. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's Greg and his wife oh. that are both nurses. Oh, okay. Oh, they are too. Are they? That's right. Sorry, Greg. PG G rated. Right. Okay. Let's get into some questions. Yeah, right. So, um, why are all your homes starting to look the same? Okay, you well, can answer that. Yeah. Well, um, I, I, that question probably comes out of the fact that um, all of our homes initially were, were doing all the pitch roof models. Okay. Um, but since we're doing that, we're probably around about, I reckon, 50-50 on our clients choosing either the flat roof or the pitch roof. Um, the pitch roof model, uh, you still got the ceiling height, walking through the homes mm. and we've strategically placed bed positions and cabinetry so you can still actually walk around the home the uh, with the pitch roof model however sometimes when people go for the gantry model uh, so you're actually walking on the gantry so rather than sort of have to walk on a little bit bit of a lean as you walk along the gantry they want to maximize every little square inch of their tiny home so they'll go for the flat roof so mm -hmm. um, we have actually uh, in our overall price instruction now because of the amount of extra effort doing the, the pitch roofs because of flashings and valleys and, or, and gutters and there's, there's so much more involved in the pitch roof model. So that's probably another bit of a reason. It's a little bit of a cost saving if you actually go for the flat roof because they are a cheaper build. Um, so we've, um, uh, to go for the pitch roof, it's a couple of grand extra to go for the pitch roof model. Yeah, so, okay. Well, the question was why are they starting to look the same? I think hmm. I think it's because oh, people you're, you're come. Talking and go, I'm thinking the interiors. Oh. They're, they're looking the same in the pictures. So mm, mm. Um, I think it's because people see the picture that they they look at that and say that looks really good. Yeah. Um, and they don't want to do a lot of colour because they don't know what their furnishings are going to be. Yeah. And I suppose for us, it's like, well, your tiny house isn't going to be sitting next to the to other tiny houses that we've built. So really. It's going to look different for, for you and your family and wherever you are. So it doesn't matter to us if they're the same thing each time. Yeah. You generally um, find that uh, people go a bit more conservative with the interior colours, mm. like the cabinetry and the walls. Yeah. Uh, and they can sort of um, uh, juice it up a bit with all In the In saying that, we've got colours coming through. We've got, so Jo, who's yeah. just got her Charlo model delivery, she did a, a black and white kitchen, which is beautiful. Then there's a few coming through with, like, there's a very dark forest green, there's a lighter blue teal, an aqua colour blue. So, yeah, there's some mm -hmm. there's some different things happening. So, mm -hmm. and it, it, we've got to remember, there's only, you know, what, 30 square metres. Yeah. So, right. there's only so much you can do <laughs> in 30 square metres. Um, but, yeah, we'll, we'll do whatever you want colour-wise. It's Dingina, Dingina from Victoria. Tara has loads of colour. You do, Tara. Tara's one of the ones that are using our new stick-on tiles as well. So Ooh, it's a different, yeah, I'm looking forward different to finish that. there. So we usually so do the pressed tin. We've now got a stick-on tile yeah. with some different stuff as well. That's very light. Um, so that, that'll be good. So we're looking mm. forward to doing that. And, and the stick-on tiles, they look like real tiles. Like it's, Absolutely. It's a great it's product. Clean them the but same. But the beauty of it, it's not only light, but of course um, there's no chance of them popping off the walls during transport with the vibration and okay. things because they're actually... They're, they're 
the tile itself is actually flexible, yeah. but when it's on the wall, it just looks like a rigid ceramic tile. So, mm. um, of course, you've got that choice of colour yep. and different shapes and sizes. Yes. You know, so, I love yeah. how, okay, so we've got a competition between Facebook and Instagram. Lots of comments on Facebook, nothing on Instagram. So, yeah. if you're watching on Instagram, give us a comment, leave something there for us so we can chat with you as yeah. well. Um, we haven't seen your food van model out and about. Where is it? Oh, that's actually <laughs> our... Um, our office at the moment on site. <laughs> Stu's actually sort of, he's he's actually migrated into that. He, um, he That's his office now um, at the moment, short term. But the good news is we've just got approval from the, the railways to pour the slab inside the uh, our building on our display site. Mm. That's getting done in the next couple of weeks. Um, got the uh, concrete polishes coming in in a couple of weeks after that. Yeah. So we're going to be able to sort of start oh, we'll tricking it up. So use the early again. in the great. new year, thinking yes. end of February, we're going to yeah. start cracking open the actual aftermarket uh, sales office as well. So Ooh, that's going to be exciting. exciting. Isn't so it? that's a 2023 mm. plan. Yeah. So even if you bought a tiny home from another um, tiny house company, and there's bits and pieces that they might be uh, mightn't be able to outsource for you. Uh, we'll be able to supply it, uh, whether it be solar, you know, different, uh, like different, a whole range of compost toilets, uh, different inclusions, furnishings, all that sort of stuff. We're going to be um, be able to supply yeah. in, which you'll be able to buy off the shelf out of our display village. Mm, yeah, that'd be very exciting. Mm. Very exciting. So if you didn't know that we're back when all the rains were, it's such a beautiful day today. You wouldn't even know we had all that, but people still struggling to get back on their feet. So our village was one of the things that actually got flooded out. So. Um, and it's been since March, the end of mm. March, that we haven't had any sort of... We I had my shop in there, we had a, a showroom, uh, we had our offices and computers and everything. We lost a lot. So we've been working out of the uh, food van model um, and our touring model, we were just showing things through there. So all of that long-winded so, story <laughs> is that's why you that's haven't why. seen our food van. <laughs> that's why you haven't seen the food van. Yeah, well, you have seen right. it because it's been our office all this time. <laughs> so hopefully soon it'll actually be mm. a coffee van. Oh, yeah, yeah. We'll turn it into oh, a coffee van. It's, it's like, I just can't, but like very shortly, there, uh, I'm, I'm guessing probably less than probably eight, probably eight to nine months, they'll be cracking open the new Super Santa next to Bunnings straight across from us. The traffic the, uh, that's going to be coming past our door is mm. unbelievable. So, we're, hence the food van, it's going to be up and running, man. We're going to have people coming in for that's coffee it. and tucker All and the stuff. Things. Yeah, yes. absolutely. Uh, current stock available. What have you got that I can buy right uh, now? Right now, we've got um, we've got a, uh, a tucker's rest. We've got two bow rivers. Um, the, we're about, when are we going to launch the, that new, uh, um, what would you call it, specky that we've got going there, Dar? That's a bit of a modern one, isn't it? Mm -hmm. What's that veneer we put on the, on the kitchen there, Dar? What I'm you, not telling what's you. What's going on? Oh. <laughs> that looks really flash, yeah. I've got to say. Yeah, so this yeah. one will come up, it'll probably be... Probably just in the new year, I'd say. Just in the new year. We might, we should be at the kitchen went in the other day. Might be our first live yeah. back. Yeah, the kitchen went in the other After day. It's looking holiday. fantastic. It's a two bedroom, two bedrooms upstairs, super modern look. Um, it's got the uh, the new Sunline um, cladding on the outside, what they call it, Sunline Bondor uh, uh, from Lysart. That's all from the same. Oh, just wait till it's done. Mm -hmm. This one it'll be. This one is going to be totally finished and Fully decorated. Furnished. furnished. So you'll yeah. be able to buy it done with the furniture in it, and it just mm. goes off to you. So, mm. um, okay, next question. So I can't read. Uh, why, uh, how are your three metre wide homes legal? I think we get this nearly every week, so, <laughs> yeah. but we'll answer it again. Yeah, okay. Um, uh, when we first got into the tiny home um, industry, uh, I actually... Now I can't read over there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the... Uh, Does that make well, a short don't, story? Yeah, short, short story, okay. Um, built one for my kids first up just for them to live in. Um, and then I had to move it from where it was to a new farm that we'd bought. Of course, it was too big to put on the back of a um, tr truck, so I had to make its own cradle and then uh, hump it to the new site in the middle of the night And um, because it was too wide, too high, all that sort of stuff. And then uh, it was my daughter, two years after living in that on our farm, said, hey, Dad, look at tiny houses in America. What do you reckon? I'm thinking, yeah, life after high rise. Why don't we crack into tiny houses? And I thought, well, okay, I've already built one. Mm. Uh, Why well, don't I work off that same principle? Um, of what we've done, what I, uh, I want to build bigger and wider tiny homes. Looking at the stuff that was in America, mm -hmm. I want to build bigger than two point four. How can I do it? Hence, spend about six to twelve months research with the RMS and um, councils, all that sort of stuff. What? How can we get a wider tiny home on the road legally um, to be able to drive anywhere in Australia with no permit? 
Uh, long story short, we've got our trailers are detachable from our tiny. Oh, sorry, the tiny home is detachable from like the for trailer our larger, for our larger models. For our larger models, okay. So, uh, of course, as as a lot of people are aware, you can't register anything larger, or wider than two point five meters wide. So our um, uh, generic size home is three meters wide. Uh, hence, you've got a registered trailer carrying an oversized load because they are detachable. So. Whilst we're on the road, we're a registered vehicle carrying an oversized load. As soon as we drive through your front gate, we're now a caravan. Uh, definition of a caravan is a relocatable home on a registrable trailer. So we meet that definition. Uh, the maximum size of a trailer is 2.5 metres wide and can't be any higher than 4.3. Well, our trailer's are only 600 mil high, so we easily comply with the second definition of um, caravans and trailers do according to the council and also um, um, the caravan association. So, um, and now because um, as a bit of a hypothetical, we thought what if somebody starts to copy our concept and then licenses it, uh, license that idea, effectively then um, that would mean we would become redundant and wouldn't be able to build three metre homes anymore. So as a precautionary measure, mm. we actually uh, have... Um, uh, we have a design application design, file. Design application file. The... We have a filing done for a for this same concept, so a removable um, tiny home trailer, uh, a chassis off the actual trailer. So to safeguard ourselves, just in case we get cut out of the market. So... And hence, uh, so we've secured that interest across Australia. So that's pretty exciting it in that respect. Exciting. And that yeah. also leads into Tara's question about yeah. making them a permanent home. Yeah. Because we can remove it off a trailer, you can then peer it onto Yeah, we've foundations. got a few of those um, starting to happen uh, where the, the customers have actually got the block of land. They actually want to get it fully um, uh, DA approved at council on their block of land. That is... Um, as a home, mm -hmm. so and because our trailers are actually removable from the tiny home, um, we, we actually coordinate it all with, with plans and sizes, dimensions, all that sort of stuff for your uh, builders on site, wherever that may be, um, to actually do all the foundations um, for the tiny home. So once we get to site, mm -hmm. um, then the tiny home is craned off the trailer and put onto the foundation. Yes. And then of course we have a buyback on the trailers. Yeah. So the trailer comes back to us. Um, yeah. And so you get a credit yeah. on the trailer. So and for it to be classed as a home, mm. it has to be pit, like pit, yeah. peered down. It has yeah. to be sitting because you won't get insured if it can be moved. So yeah. to be a home, it has to be um, attached mm. to the ground yeah. permanently. So, 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 in, so a couple of key benefits then. What that means is we can have the largest tiny homes in Australia. It also means then it can also be classified, uh, can, can be used as a, a principal place of residence on your yep. block of land. Yep. Now, and then there's also things inside, like the stairs have to be the, the yep. right yep. Um, All the, the going. Heights, yeah, and, yeah. Yeah. Maximum rise of 180 millimetres, maximum going of 310 the millimetres. So there's lots of... Yeah. Um, there's a that, bit of work in it. There's a lot of work in it, but it's all it achievable. Mm. And, uh, our homes also can meet uh, the bowel ratings for the fire prone areas. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's um, stuff that we can actually upgrade the homes. That generally is going to cost around about eight to ten grand to upgrade our homes to meet the bowel ratings for fire prone areas. Mm -hmm. So there's so many benefits with yeah. our with our overall uh, concept. It's, yeah. it's really exciting, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah. It is really exciting. Mm. And the connections dropping. Yeah, we're getting that few people saying that. Not sure what's going on there. So might just be everybody's, I don't know, online this afternoon. <laughs> everyone's Googling. <laughs> Everyone, I thought everyone would be sleeping after the soccer, the World Cup. Oh, well. Okay. Um, so the showroom, we've talked about that. Okay. Um, oh, somebody, they had the, so in our gantry model, we have the wire ropes. Uh, sorry, yeah. gantry model. In some of the models, we have the gantry with the wire ropes. Yes. And um, one of our customers said that when that got there, the, their wires were loose. Mm. Okay. So just explain to maybe the clients yeah. um, how that, yeah, how yeah. that works. Well, with the, uh, the the ropes, I mean, we, we knit them all up. So when they leave the factory, they're nice and tight. Of course, you don't want to over-tighten them because you know, you're going to distort timber and whatnot. They're only going to be a certain tension. Mm. Um, but during transport, just with vibration and the constant travel, um, there could be a tendency that the wire ropes will come loose. It's a real, I mean, it's a three-inch nail 
in the uh, the little mm. doodle like and just twist it around until it's tight. That's like yeah. it's so because there's a there's a, a, a reverse thread. Yeah. yeah, there's a, a, a left hand thread and a right hand thread at mm. each end. So you can actually tighten it up. It's, mm. it's a really simple exercise. Yes. Uh, it's one of the things but, we've got to film. Mm, yes, we've got to show <laughs> people how to do this. Yeah, yes, lots of yeah it's, and, it is really simple. But yeah. um, and another big yeah. thing in which we're going to be putting uh, in our kits for everyone, so just little things to uh, look at. When we, um, for instance, plumbing, the, uh, the S-bends uh, uh, underneath the shower, uh, underneath the, um, the laundry. And this would be the, the case for everyone. This yeah. isn't just yeah, it's not just, This is just, just, just the, this is the yeah. tiny house industry. And I suppose... What I'm hoping that you get from us is honesty, um, and and as we're going along and we're learning, we're telling you things that we're we maybe we haven't done well or we're getting better at. So um, the looseness of those yeah, yeah. pipes, well, the PVC pipes. I mean, you can't over tighten them in the factory. I mean, if we do, you got to thread because it's only PV, uh, it's only um, yes, uh, not PVC. So in a point. normal house, yeah. They do that yeah, to but, commission everything. Yeah, that's right. But but also the the house is not moving. That's right. Yeah, the tiny home's moving it's, on on, on it's doing lots of this. And then of course it's four wheel driving across a paddock. That's you know? right. So there's so many differentials. Yes. And of course, um, especially in winter, when you tighten those pipes, the, the rubber seals are actually yeah. stiff and hard. Yeah. So you tighten them up, but as soon as then you get to uh, get your end end user and yeah. it's up and running, put hot water down the sinks. Yeah. Yeah. The rubber's loosen because now yes. you've got hot water going. Down. That's actually happened to me in my house. Yeah. So like, then, my, my house and, hasn't moved anywhere. That's right. So <laughs> in an S bend, there's actually three uh, large nuts, and you can actually it can just dump, be done with that's two right. two hands yeah. to yeah. tighten them up, and that stops uh, those. So, so loops, maybe you know, that's so. a suggestion for I mean, it could be for anyone, but certainly for our clients, just. Firstly, when it gets there, just go through everywhere that the pipes go into, yeah. like a sink or a shower. Just check that they're mm. all nice and tightened up, and then probably do that every, you know, through the seasons, yeah, yeah. because you're going to get shrinkage and then expansion, right? Yeah, yeah. So That's just right, check yeah. that there's no an another in. another big thing, and yes. it's, it's purely comes down to um, the the law in caravans is that you've got to use these flared fittings for the gas lines. They're absolutely useless. Um, we hate them with a passion, but by law, we had to put these things in. Um, anyway, long story short, we had a, a couple of customers, of course, the, the gas leaks, but because these flare fittings are all done under pressure. Yes. And with the con the, it's everything. Again, moving. I do want to emphasise everything that leaves our factory is pressure tested. Gas, water, yep. um, everything is tested. Yeah. However, um, during transport, yes. and of course, then you get to the end, usually you're four wheel driving across a paddock, mm. those fittings. It doesn't matter how tight you do them up in the factory, um, they may need to be tightened Again. up on site. But it's yeah. not hard. It's like just a shifting spanner. They're not yes. falling apart. Yes. But however, we have now, um, we swung over now to welded joints. Okay. Because welding joints is hard because everything on a tiny home yes. you know, could catch fire. Right. Uh, it's not a, like, not a brick yes. home or concrete home. Right. So, uh, yeah. so the joints now have actually got to be welded, pre-welded, and then right. put up in a position. A lot more extra effort, mm. but it's, it saves us a headache at the back yeah. end. Yeah. Now, however, there's two flared fittings that you have still got to be flared fittings. The one going into the actual hot water system, mm -hmm. uh, the Renai hot, hot water, right. and the other one into the gas bottle. I've yeah. still got to be flared yeah. fittings. Yeah. So, so again... Yeah. For our clients, we have to get these videos done so yeah. that we can show you what to do when it mm. gets there because Nick's our driver, but he doesn't do all that. Um, he will deliver your home and then he'll go home. So mm. it's up to you to know how to do that. So we have to get better at making sure we've got all of that ready for you. Yeah. Um, and if you're not sure, then it's just, just do a video call with us until we get mm. those um, movies done. Yeah. What's the timeline for a buyback of the trailer if the client decides down the track to make home permanent? Oh, okay. Well, we probably only about eight weeks. Um, oh, that quick? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. No, it's pretty quick because yeah, I mean, you obviously, need to know. If, if we're four months, five months before our delivery, I mean, obviously, you should have all your foundations ready to go. So we drop the trail, um, the home off, um, and then we leave it with you, and then it's. Of course, then if you drop it back yourself, which you'd be able to do because it's oh, yeah. light now. I think the question was if they decided later, oh, now we want to get another one, let's make this our uh, permanent well, home. Well, lots of things come into play at because it's, it's, it's now going to be exposed to the weather mm. um, and, and, and Rego could be but running out. you could out. certainly sell it. You could still oh, yeah. sell it as a trailer yeah, right, yeah, when it's right. done. Yeah. So. Mm. Um, because they're all registered when they leave our place. So, yeah. um, right. Can I live in a tiny on my land while I build my house? Um the the way to do that there's a there's a um, um, a legal way to do that we uh, have done a few DAs where 
I've suggested to the client or to the architects, whether it's our architect or the client's architect, you actually put in for the DA for the actual final finished home that you're going to build on your property. Mm -hmm. And as part of the DA, you've actually put in for temporary accommodation mm -hmm. whilst you're building mm -hmm. the home. Yes. Now, the beauty of that is doing this system is as soon as your DA is approved, you can actually move your tiny home onto the property and start living in it because that's the part of the DA. It's Temp uh, Tem temporary, uh, yeah. DA to build the principal place of residence and temporary accommodation whilst you're building. So as soon as that gets DA approved, bam, move there, start living. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And then <laughs> when you're in your house, you can rent out your rent tiny. Rent out your tiny. Absolutely. <laughs> so, yeah. In the income in. That's it. Do you mm. do skylights? We do skylights on the slope, uh, on the pitch part of the roofs. Um, I will not do a skylight in the flat section. If, if you've got a full-blown uh, flat roof, the whole roof is flat, uh, I will not put a skylight in the flat part of the roof. And the first reason is because you are gonna cook, okay? You're gonna be that hot and you will regret the day that you ever put a skylight in the roof. Two things, firstly, the sun beams straight down inside your, yes. uh, in your home and you're gonna, you're gonna get smashed. Uh, the second thing is um, with, uh, um, at night time, so it's, it's, it's warm on the inside, it's cold on the outside because you've got the heating, the air yes. conditioner, or whatever, you're actually gonna get condensation <laughs> On that glass. And where's the condensation going to go? It's going to drip straight down. <laughs> on you? On you. Yeah, While you're yeah. sleeping. So do not do it. It's, it's honestly, you'll regret the day. We, um, we but on the slow part of the roof. I think we've said this a few times, but yeah. uh, I mean, for me, we have to remember that we live in Australia. So we can look at all the beautiful things overseas. It's a different climate here. There's humidity. There's like our humidity can get up to what? 95, 96% some parts of the country. So can you imagine the heat and then the condensation up inside in a yeah. skylight that's, you know, that far from you? Yeah. It's you won't get the condensation on our panelling, but it'll, on glass, it'll, it'll glass it'll, it'll, it gets yes, smashed. It'll drip down. Because with our insulation panel, now don't ask me why, I'm, I'm not a, um, there's obviously, it's something to do with the way we build our homes, but with the, the 75 millimetres of solid polystyrene, which is, forms part of the structure, mm. okay, what it does, it, it doesn't give you that dramatic change from hot to cold, okay, inside That's your actual it. home. Yep. So hence, the, you're not getting the condensation like yep. you would, uh, you know, on potentially a timber frame home or something yep. like that. So yep. um, I don't know exactly why, but all I know is that I've never had any of our clients um, come back to us and say they're getting condensation inside the lounge room mm. uh, in our home. So yep. that's, I don't know why, but hey, it works. <laughs> Just run with so, it. You know? Yeah. Uh, do you sell flat packs or shell models? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, we haven't, uh, we've had um, people wanting to buy our. Uh, just our trailers. That's so in other words, a two point four trailer with the removable chassis. I won't sell that as an item. Um, however, if it's uh, with the structure on top, so in other words, the shell built on top, yep. then we will actually sell those as a shell because the big thing for us is it's all about the structure and the mechanical. Uh, strength and structural strength of the tiny home. Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure it's rock solid so then you can add all your frilly bits and all that stuff on top. But um, I won't sell a trailer on its own with just the three metre wide because there's a lot riding on it. I mean, even though you may have built it, but everyone else might think we built it and you deal with Bodgy Brothers and it makes us all bad. So <laughs> you're just not going to go there. So yeah. we'll build the structure. So structurally, it's not going to fall apart. Okay, Michelle's put some questions in. But I can only see the first bit. So she's coming soon with her vision board. That's oh, fantastic. I like it, yeah. Can you opt for a bump out or is it called the pull out for extra lounge? Mm. We're actually going to climb very shortly. Um, we're doing for Jess, okay? What we're doing is it's our 8.2 model, but we're actually bumping out an extra metre in the master bedroom, but solid structure, not movable, solid. So it's actually going to hang over the bull bar, over the tow bar. Upstairs. Upstairs. Yep. A metre further. So the actual upper floor will be 9.2 metres long by wow. 3 metres wide. Yep. And the lower floor will be uh, 8.2 by 3 yep. metres. So yes. that's going to be, that's a new thing coming through. Yes. Um, we start that build in about three weeks' time. Yeah. So, so that'll I be think, interesting. Um, if I'm understanding it right, those bump outs, are, you know, in caravans where it's got the, and that comes mm. out like this off yeah. the side. Yeah. Well, we're, ours is 3 metres wide. Yeah, we're, so we're, we're already 3 metres already... wide. There's no need to bump it out. No. And as soon as you start the doing the, the, the bump outs, there's lots of stuff you've got to think about is that if you have a bump out, you're going to actually have a step inside your home. 
because that bump out's got to slide on something, okay? So when you slide in and slide out, the bump outs, however they build their structure, is going to probably be a minimum three to four inches. So that means you're going to have a step inside your home. Right. Rather than a nice flat. Yeah. Cool. So if we haven't understood that, and there's probably other questions, yeah. we can um, respond if you like. Send yeah. us an email and yeah. we'll respond. And to the other big thing is also with bump outs is waterproofing of the bump outs. Oh yes. Okay, so that's super critical because yeah. there's there's lots of stuff coming into play. Like you just don't pull it out and then put a rigid flashing around it. Like mm. it, it comes out. I mean. This, this has probably been tried and proven in the caravan industry because yes. a lot of caravans have bump outs. Yes. Okay. Yep. But because we're, they bump out to three metres, but we're already three metres. Yes. So you don't need to bump out anywhere. We're already yeah. bumped. <laughs> we're already pre-bumped. <laughs> <laughs> That's my next question. Oh. Why aren't you dancing anymore? What oh. to your Friday dances? Well, okay. We had a few people ask that. <laughs> I'll have to crack back in or not. I think I'm... we'll do a, a really good Christmas one. We'll yeah. get all, everybody in it for Christmas. Um, okay, DA process, we've already gone don't, through. Don't, before we go too much further, can I, can I have a hissy fit or bellyache oh, right now? Sure. Can I, is, is it about right? me? No, it's about oh, the good. younger generation, right? Oh, you're going to generalise. Yeah, there I'm just go. I'm just going to generalise because, you know, this There's year... There's a lot of great young kids out there. There is, <laughs> but three of them... Okay. Uh, started this year, we had two first year apprentices, one a job, one said, uh, come on, be builders. No worries. Give these kids a run. Greg said, don't have a hissy fit. Uh, now, <laughs> oh, Joe, please don't dance. I think. <laughs> <He's> gonna... <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, hmm. four months in, like, now you've you got to understand, I empower these kids, okay? They come in green as, know nothing. Yeah, know nothing about building, like, right? Just know nothing. Anyway, in a very short period of time, so within three to four months, I've actually empowered these kids to do more and believe more of themselves than they ever thought possible. Right. So in four months, That's all good. of a sudden, they're, 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 they're doing the work of not, not a tradesman, but probably a third or fourth year apprentice because we've taught them, we've shown them how to do it, and, and with the tiny houses, because it's so in-depth and so detailed, okay, mm. there's a lot of work involved. Yep. So these kids have picked up the start. Now, all of a sudden, after four months, they think they're tradesmen, um, and because I've empowered them, they think it's all them, uh, and now they're going to go chasing the big money, doing the, the big frames outside, rah, rah, rah. And, like, and like, when, when I was a kid... I can see you're still hurting. <laughs> yeah, I, I, well, I am. Because, you know, when I was a kid, the yeah. only reason I had a couple of jobs... Was because I was life. retrenched. <laughs> I, I was retrenched you. because of lack of work and back in the day, yeah, you know. Like, yeah. I'm, a, I'm an old dinosaur. But, yeah, you know, when you started something, I you actually say, finish it. Yeah, but, this, yes, true, yeah. That that's gone, okay? So now, out this generation now... Will not have the same job for thirty years like my, oh. my father did. It, it's oh. you will change careers, you know, jobs six, seven, eight times. Yeah, but they but, do it every six months, darling. Like, but you also, people? also, I think post COVID, there is so there's no overseas travellers coming. Yeah. So we don't yeah. have there's yeah. all these jobs that that there is a lot of jobs out there right now yeah. for people, yeah. and there's the mines. People are yeah. going to the mines and taking the bucks. Yeah. So they're jumping ship out of apprenticeships to go chase the money. And I well, think I'm, there's this, sorry, I'll just yeah, finish. I yeah. think there's this mindset of, well, tomorrow might not come. So I'm just going to do what I need to do for myself today. Yeah. Because we've lived in a pandemic, droughts, floods, all the things. So these kids have a totally different outlook. Like when I was a kid, life was really slow and, you know, very same, same you know, playing in the street with your mates, cricket and that sort yeah. of thing. But today, it's not like that today. Yeah, but it's so but, fast. But, no, and everything's got, given got, to me now. No, I want McDonald's no in five seconds and I want... Now, you know, if you can't commit to a job for four years... As yeah. a, like, I, I, I go into a contract with these kids, mm. okay? It's a contract, four-year yeah. contract. Now, they break it after four months because they're going to go chasing the big money. I said, what's wrong with you kids? I mean, you're not tradesmen, mate. And in actual fact... You know where. It's yes. only because I made you look good. Belinda said, what about a mature aged apprenticeship? If there is yeah, someone out brilliant. there Mine, that I'm wants to, to do an appro a, a mature aged apprenticeship, we want yep. to speak to you because you actually know you've already done mm. some time in the world yep. and you know the value of how good it would be to be in a factory where there's no weather problems, you can go the same place. Mm. You don't have to try to figure out, am I going to be up on a roof or down in a basement? Am I going to be in poo today? Am I out in the dirt? Am I shoveling? Like, it's a, it's a great job and it's a great team. So, yeah. But not only that, Doug, yes. the, the detail, right, 
um, these kids or carpenters, they go and build stand frames and all that sort of stuff. Mate, at the end of the day, anyone can stand frames. It's a frame. Who gives a rats? But I tell you what, the education you get building tiny homes, and it's not just our company, it's other tiny home companies, yeah. okay? Yeah. The, the, the training and the, edu the, the skill level of coming out of the tiny home industry is massive. They do a bit of everything. Because you, you, you do brushes, everything. You, yeah. You're flooring, you're yes. skirtings, architraves, windows, so cladding, else. roofing, yeah. guttering. Yeah. You come out with this wealth of knowledge. But not only that, um, the detail has got to be right. Now, if you're if you do a rough job and it's not good, oh, pull it apart, build okay. it again. So you come out, yeah. uh, but when you build a big house, a lot of stuff gets missed and you don't see the detail. That, but that's actually home, you see the detail. Let's talk about that. Hmm? Let's talk about that. Okay, so what we're finding is, and and this is just a generalisation again. Mm -hmm. That's awful to do that, but um, when you have you build a house like a, a like we're sitting in a home here, and you move in. Within days of moving in, you might see that oh, they've missed a spot on this cornice, or there's a crack in something, or um, there's lots of little movement in the house, and there'll be some cracking up in the roof line and things like that. But it's just part of house building. And so, you know, you'll just go along and you'll sicker that bit up there and you'll do this and you'll move your vinyl floor or whatever it is. What happens in a tiny house is take all of the things that you have in a home and condense it down into a magnifying glass. And so we literally are on our hands and knees scraping like bits of paint, bits of paint out from the skirtings because... Clients are only in 30 square metres. So they actually are looking for any tiny yeah. little thing. And yeah. our, my painter said to me, because I went through, before the homes go, I go through with my eyes and do the like a list. Again, after it's been done, I come through and I do it again. And I give them a, like, there's a spot or there's a this or there's a that. And the carpet, the painter said to me, he said, actually the BCA, the code, it's actually, you stand back, is it a metre or a metre and a half? 1.5 metres from the wall. And like, I was up on the wall like this, <laughs> looking to see, oh, there's a little dot there, Carter, you have to... He said, it's actually 1.5 metres back. If you can't see it from 1.5 metres back, there's no problem. So what, what's, you know, we have to be very careful of is going through with a microscope to look for... Um, you know, up in underneath, oh, there's uh, something up here, like a little gap there underneath a cupboard that you would never look at normally, but because you're in a in a tiny house, yeah, yeah. you're looking for look anything detail, to find. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. It's just... So so the skill level, I guess, just coming back to yeah. the skill... Oh, Nick, one of my big regrets in life was never doing a trade. Nick, <laughs> we want you to drive our trucks, Nick. Hey, Nick. But, Nick, next year. why right. don't you come aboard as an apprentice with us and they do the driving as well. 15, 28, <laughs> four-wheel drive, mate. Happy days. <laughs> yeah, Nick. Let's do it, Nick. That'd be great. Um, um, so, so just like, coming back to the, the attention to detail with uh, young carpenters coming through the tiny home, like I mentioned, not just our company, but other tiny home companies, the, the attention to detail has got to be right. You can't... Just sweep it on the carpet, she'll be right, mate. They won't see yeah. that because it's six metres away. Mm. Uh, the whole tiny home might only be six metres long, so of course they're going to see it. So, yeah. um, so the detail that the you'll come out of the tiny home industry yeah. a far better carpenter than if you're out standing frames yes. on building a house. Yeah. But the kids, the trouble is, what happens is they go to tech, um, and, and and at tech in the first year apprentices, what are you building? Oh, I'm doing a two story house and doing. Standing frames. Oh, what are you doing? Oh, tiny homes. Oh, you're only doing tiny homes, mate. That's mm. nothing. Well, I've got news for you, kids. Think, you know what? Stuff, I yeah. think it's, it's <laughs> this a, is huge, well, man. I think it's super challenging yeah. because you're actually you're actually um, upping your game <laughs> in your trade because they yeah. are looking at it with a magnifying glass. Yeah. You you have to be better and better and better that's all the right. time. So we're like we're already talking. One of the things that's been a a, a sticking point for us this year is sticky doors because we use these um, the press push button. press button. Mm. So one of those things is sometimes with the movement, when the tiny house has gone a thousand kilometres, the, the cupboards move a little bit and sometimes they're sticking and they're not opening. So it's either we go to just normal door handles 
Well, we, we are handles. actually switching uh, switch or, the swing over to the soft closed doors now yes. and normal handles. So. Yes, we, we're going to do that. But mm. if you still want those, it was the actual, um, our installer who does our kitchens that said, just you do a one more millimetre in the gap, in the, where the doors go. Oh, when they make One the more yeah, millimetre yeah. would actually stop that happening. Mm. And, mm. you know, that's the learning that we're all doing. Mm. So mm. it's just amazing. So anyway, yes. um, we've got to do a giveaway. For yes. our um, thing and oh, I was just, I was just the the, um, the swan there when um, I was out just cleaning the pool. So I usually do that on a sunny morning when I'm um, just that's my sunny morning thing. I go and clean the pool with this thing, you know. Yeah. And I'm watching you hang the clothes on the line. Now talk to me about this clothes line, Doug. <laughs> I'm hoping to get a new hills hoist for Christmas <laughs> well, because let me tell you this story now that you've brought it up. So. Um, when we moved here, because it's 50 acres and it's a pretty big area that I, well, I like to mow. That's my get out of my mow own the lawn, head. Mow, mow the lawn. Mow the lawn. Anyway, well, what, what else do I mow? <laughs> well, well, I know that. <laughs> anyway, I like to mow the lawn and I was push mowing it all around our house. And anyway, so said, I'm going to buy you, I've got a Toro, the ride on one. I said, I'm not driving that thing. It's too, it's too hard. I don't know how to drive it. It's just, no. So he came home one day with a little one, a little Toro for me to drive to do the yard around the house. And he said, just jump on it and just go somewhere where there's nothing and just practice, you know, pushing forward and then moving like and back his brakes. And anyway, this movement is really hard <laughs> because it does its own thing. So I went all the way up the back where there was nothing. And the only thing up there was the Hills Hoist clothesline. And I managed to get myself wrapped around the Hills Hoist clothesline so the that roller. the... <laughs> so, so now, so now when she hangs the clothesline line, she goes downhill like this, then back up again like this, then back down again. So the Hills Hoist, again. if you're overseas, it's a clothesline that's, you know, it's got like a roof and it spins around like this, it's got these great uh -huh. wires. And I love it because it dries the clothes really well. Well, it doesn't look like that anymore. It's sort of like... <laughs> It's all it's all pushed down like this. And I managed to convince my children when they got home from school, because it was summer, that it was that hot that the sun melted the clothesline. <laughs> so, anyway, so thanks. I do need a new hills hoist for Chrissy. Okay, okay. so the winner oh, of our go. giveaway is... is Mo or Moe, M O E Law, L A W. So Moe if you're watching Law. Mo Law, Mo Law, you have just won. You've won a, a weekend, weekend for, two for two at Willow Springs mm. Farm, which is down in Foxgrounds, uh, just down Berry, New South Wales area. I hope Mo's so, not from Western Australia. <laughs> Well, anyway, you've won at Weekend for Two. So get in contact with us. We'll put yeah. you in contact with them. And the other thing I did, oh, there's two more things we had to say real quick because yes. it's half past five and right. everyone needs oh. to leave. Yeah. Um, firstly, we've got a house come up for sale. Oh, this is really exciting. And it'll be on our social media this week. So one of our clients is moving and he has a home that he's going to sell, but he's also on a beautiful property and the opportunity is to actually buy it and stay where he oh, already is. Yeah. So if you are looking for a tiny home that you could move. It's a Jackson could... what? A Jackson? Or oh, uh, it's a Jolly. Jolly. A jolly. Three yes. bedroom. Three bedroom Jolly. So if you're looking for a tiny home, it's gonna be a great price, cracking price. Um and already set up, already, already set on up. a farm. It's already local to us. It's in this area where in we the live. Illawarra. Okay, so if you are looking to rent a tiny house, you'd have to buy the tiny house, but he's already got the lease. So yeah. you just take over the lease. Or you could buy it and move it wherever. Yeah. So if you're yeah. interested in that, please get in contact with us this week. We will put it up on our social media. It won't last long. Yeah. This thing will sell overnight. Yeah, overnight. Especially Trust with me. Especially with the farm already Especially with the, uh, it's a, mm -hmm. a magnificent location. Magnificent and a really good rental, like really mm. good rental. Mm. So mm. that's that one. And the other thing was that another client of ours, um, Tiny Love Getaways, mm. they had, so they've got a Tucker's Rest model. And they started, um, they were going to do a B&B &B, and then they got flooded out. Not the home, but the, their farm got flooded out and then they got mm. flooded again. Anyway, they're about to open. Again, so, giveaway. so we're going to do a giveaway with them. Yep. So we'll get in touch with them and then we'll do another giveaway for two people. And that's up in the... Uh, it's in the Richmond, Richmond area, New yeah. South Wales. So uh -huh. that's another one coming up. Anyway, talk too long. 
Yeah. We've got our pizza ready to go. Oh. I don't, I've just, I've got a conspiracy oh, theory. Here we go. Conspiracy. You ready for this? I'm going to turn you off. Toilet paper manufacturers. Okay. <laughs> One of the other things I do on a Sunday morning is go and clean the barn toilets, mm -hmm. right? Because the grandkids go over and give them a workout, you know? And anyway, I, I use the toilet paper to clean the toilets, like just because I can't find the rags and everything else. Okay. So, and Too when much you, information. When you get a new toilet roll, yes. right? Yes. You, you, it, like they glue them. You know how it's sort of glued? Mm -hmm. And you think, oh, I just try to start this thing. Yep. And you end up using about 45 pieces of toilet paper. Tommy, you crack it open and you get back to the normal toilet paper. It's all stuck together and, yep. and it just... Do you know what else they've done? They've what made the... the they've made sure, the, they do it on purpose, man. They've made the holes bigger. The actual yeah, the yeah, cardboard right. rolls mm. are bigger mm. so that there's less paper on there. Yep. Do you know that the guy who went to Colgate with an idea that was going to make them millions, yep. you know what he did? Do you know what he said? Mm. You do? Yeah. He made them sign a secrecy agreement yep. and then he told them to make the cap size, the opening the size, size, bigger yep. so that people used more. They gave him a million dollars. Wow. Wow. For that, for that idea. There you go. There, and there you go. So if you've got a great idea, come and see us. Yeah. You never know. We'll put it in give you a million dollars. But <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we'll give you a weekend for two or something like yeah. that. So yeah, for sure. anyway, thanks so much for joining us this week. Um, so yeah, lots of things happening, lots to talk about. Don't forget, Mo Law, you won the giveaway for um, Willow Springs Farm. Uh, uh, there's a home for sale that's already on a block of land that you could just jump on straight away. We've got a specky coming up in early Ooh, January. Top that shelf. Will be fully furnished. Top it's shelf. It's going to be amazing. Mm. And we'll see you next week. Pizza is on. See you later. Gotta go. Over it.